since the early UFC, so the first UFC, 12th November 1993, since then that was like reading a notice to a lot of the uh, martial arts community. Some people ignored it. Some people ran with it and realized that they needed to do something to get their martial art more complete. And so today, what we want to look at is why it's really important for karate guys to get at least a fundamental understanding of what to do in certain situations. One of the things that captures the spirit of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu more than anything is the guard. It's BJJ that fights off their back better than anyone. Uh, in Judo, if you get on your back and you stay there long enough, you lose. In wrestling, you get on your back, stay there long enough, you, you lose. And we saw this in the early UFC when you had some of the some really strong wrestlers. For a wrestler, the whole game is to get their opponent to the mat and pin them. Well, what was happening was they would get their opponent to the mat and in their head pin them, which essentially was the end of the fight. So they'd never really trained in terms of what to do after that. So they got caught out. And the BJJ guys fighting off their back made it very difficult for stand-up fighters and even grapplers who weren't familiar with that guard fighting system. So today, just for fun, we're going to look at a couple of things. One, we're going to look at the dangers of getting caught in a uh, BJJ guard. And two, we're going to look at some of the things you can do. Now, remember, also in, in This Is Karate, Chapter 15, he pointed out that uh, and the chapter 15 was called in Japanese newaza. It was translated at that time to lying down techniques. Lying down means neru, to lie down. Um, and newaza means techniques whilst you're lying down. It's been consequently um, translated probably more poetically as groundwork. Uh, but for the early uh, translators, they didn't have an example so they had to come up with something themselves they call it line down techniques and in chapter 15 so also points out that aikido karate jujitsu all these sort of martial arts all had a sim one origin they're all the, the one martial art in the early days and that was called taijutsu or the body arts the fighting arts and uh, over time different people decided to focus on different areas some people focused on the grappling some, some people focused on the striking some people focused on the throws and so on. But Saulside points out that if, as a karate car, you don't know what to do if you're taken to the ground by a judo player or a wrestler, uh, well, then you can be in really big, big trouble. And so today what we're going to look at, first of all, is just a couple of simple things that can happen to you if you're not aware on the ground uh, why it's a false sense of, security, sense of security to think that even though you're in the guard, you're safe because you're on top. See, the guard fighter, and here's one way to interpret it, the guard fighter, even though he's on the bottom, his hips are on top, and it's the hip control movement that makes all the difference. So the famous mount where you lie on your back and someone's on top of you raining blows, if you just reverse that, that's the guard. But the guy on the bottom still has control because of his hip position. Uh, so we're going to, first of all, look at um, some of the possibilities of that position. Then we'll look at some of the fallacies and then we'll look at some of the solutions of, as, of what you can do as a karate fighter. And we're deliberately not using mats because one of the things that needs to be pointed out for the BJJ guy too is generally speaking, BJJ guys train on very soft mats and it's very safe. You get taken down, you do a break fall and it's nice and soft and sometimes you hit your head but it doesn't really hurt you know, or you're rolling around. But if you're rolling on, this is carpet on cement. So you've got about half a centimetre thick of carpet, then it's just solid cement. So if you hit the deck on that and you don't know how to deal with that, well, then you can be in a little bit of trouble from the BJJ guy's perspective. Okay, so let's just look at what we call the guard. There's a, a very successful BJJ teacher in Maryland in America. His name's Lloyd Irvin, produced... A, um, a, a collection of world champion BJJ fighters, very, very um, accomplished. And I learned from him a really nice phrase. When you hit the mat, you're either top, bottom, parallel or perpendicular in one of the eight positions. 
Your objective is to get your grips, stabilize your position, and then look for the submission. If no submission presents itself, further improve your grips, further improve your stability, and keep looking for the submission. In MMA, you could add on further improve your grips, further improve your stability, and look for the striking opportunity. All of BJJ comes down to variations of those eight positions. And we're just going to look at one today, which is the guard position. This is what's often called the closed guard. And it presents a lot of possibilities. If I get control of this arm here, come here, this is called a triangle, and it's it just you can choke a fully grown man out quite easily. If the triangle doesn't work, I have an armbar right there. If the armbar doesn't work, I have what's called an omoplata, which this tears the shoulder completely out of joint. And if Mitch thinks he can get up from there, or if the karate fighter thinks they can get up from there fairly easily, it's basically impossible to get up. And all I do is I put pressure forward, and that tears his whole shoulder. The other possibilities that you have in the, uh, in the guard is I have chokes. I come in here like this, I get my hand here, and then I can manipulate, come in here. I have chokes there. I have chokes here, like this, as well. I have chokes here, like that. Sometimes I'll go in here, and he'll put his hand in to defend. I'll continue on with this anyway, get that, and then just wipe his hand away with my own, go back. I'll wipe my hand away with my own elbow, and I can continue to finish the choke from there. So we have the arm bars, we have the chokes, we have the triangles, we have the omoplatas. What else can we do from there? We also have sweeps. A sweep can be something as simple as this, where I control the arm here, I come to this position, and I can do something like here. See this? Pull here, push with my knee, and sweep to the ground. And then, well, BJJ, I wouldn't hit, but I can finish with chokes. And you're in the same guard position there. Yeah. In, in mount, it's the same position in reverse. I'm in exactly the same position I was before, except I'm on top. The difference is my hips are what dominates everything. And sometimes as I attack the neck, he'll defend with his arm, and that gives me the arm, and that'll allow me to come over with an arm bar like that. So this is the guard. Numerous types of sweeps. Another type of sweep may be what I do here like that and kick straight over. And once again, when I get in this position, the danger is we have arm bars here. We have cross body arm bars. So there's a lot of things that a good BJJ fighter can do to a karate guy. Often a karate guy will, I've literally had conversations where they just go and just punch them. Just easy, just punch them. Okay, so. The problem with that is that a BJJ guy knows well how to use his legs. So if I'm here and Mitch throws a punch at me, boom, I use my knees to punch misses, and then look, I end up in this position and I choke. Or like I did before, I have this arm captured and I have an arm bar there as well. So the whole idea of just punching is not appropriate. The other thing too is that quite often BJJ guys will start to grab your wrists here. And Mitch tries to throw a punch, boom, if I have the wrists, I'll start to come up here once again, start to put you in triangle positions and so on. So if you don't know what to do, and even there, look, boom, arm bars and so on. There's a lot of things a BJJ guy can do which can get you in a lot of trouble if your philosophy is I'm just going to punch them. Nothing wrong with punching them. You just have to do it in the correct way. So let's look at some of the possibilities now that if you understand these few principles as a karate fighter, you can end up in a BJJ guard and survive for a lot longer. I'm not talking about doing BJJ with someone. Even the average blue belt would be too skillful on the ground for an untrained karate fighter. But if the karate fighter is simply talking about surviving that situation where he can use his karate, well, then you need to have a couple of fundamental principles in place. 
the first thing I have to be conscious of is my posture. If Mitch breaks me down and pulls me down, well, then he starts to choke me and, and all kinds of things. And that's where a lot of problems start. And then I start to push up here, and the next thing you know, that's where he's got the arm bar and the switch. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I have good posture. And one of the best ways to do that is what I call a pelvic tilt. It means I twist my pelvic area forward like that. So now when Mitch tries to pull me down, it's much harder. I hardly even use my hands. It's much harder. If I relax and do what you see that, that's what most karate guys would do. They'd be here and they go there and oh, bang, bang, you're in trouble there. So the first thing you have to understand is I'm going to keep my posture. And I do that by pushing my pelvis forward there. Okay, now I have the posture. Now he tries to pull me down. It's much harder. So now I can dictate a lot of things. If he tries to grab me to do things, I, all, all I need to do is just fight the hand fight. Okay, now I showed an illustration before where he grabs my hands. Okay, now we can start to use our karate more intelligently. Okay, if he grabs my hands, all I'm going to do, knock it off, control and hit. And I don't want to... Uh, load up my whole body because the more I load up, the more manipulable my weight becomes. Okay, and anything can happen. So, what I do, control my posture. If he starts to grab my arms, I can break them off. Grab my arms, keep breaking them off. I don't let him get control of my arms. If he tries to grab my collar or my neck, I don't allow him. This is one of the best things a karate guy can do. Now he has my collar, my sleeve. Okay, all I'm going to do is come across, trap both hands, and I'm going to do snap uh, uh, aguchi sort of techniques. I'm not going to do a punch. I'm just going to do a sharp <coughs> strike like that. I just want that strike to hit him on the nose, on the chin, on the eyebrow, anywhere that is going to create that concussion. Okay? When he recovers from that, he's going to start going after you again. He maybe grabs your two wrists once again. This is what I like to do. One... Two, there. So it's it's almost like Uchiuke, boom, and Gedambara. Uchiuke, Gedambara, and boom, straight away punch there. One, two, and punch. But notice I'm not punching with my body. It's a snap. It's a snap punch because I need to maintain control of my posture and stability. As Lloyd Urban says, we hit the ground. You're on the top, bottom, parallel, perpendicular, one of the eight positions. Get your grips stabilize your position you if ever your stability is compromised you then that's the art the master of a bj a bjj master what he does is he screws at your stability and you find you see you how did i even get there okay you're constantly fighting to maintain your stability as a karate fighter you have very good posture trust me karate guys with any experience in good stances they're very solid in this position okay Another thing BJJ guys will tell you is they like to have what they call active toes, toes there. As karate fighters, you're used to Caesar. So your stability in this position is way above average, so you take advantage of that. I'm going to push my pelvis forward, and as he goes to grab, I'm just monitoring that. And then every opportunity I get, snap punch there, snap punch there, there. roundhouse there, snap punch there. Anything you can to... Uh, Start to say, and you work on the accumulation of the techniques. Okay, you grab your wrists, you're going to break those wrists off Boom. <clears throat> straight away. Every time you break something off, hit straight away. Every time you're breaking a grip, well, there, like this. There, he's doing that. Then, bam, straight away. Bam. That's all you're doing. There. And if he wants to hang on, <clears throat> he's doing things with his legs. I need to make sure that I keep that. See, my arms aren't floating here. I'm pushing back into his legs. I'm pushing down onto his hand. I'm controlling this arm like that. And I want to make sure that I'm doing sh small punches. And when the opportunity arises, that's when you start to go for the heavy, take advantage of the cement. So all you're going to do is hand on the face boom, and push the head into the, into the cement. Okay? And you do that a couple of times. Bang, bang, like that. Short, sharp movements. And now you're in a position because they're, they don't have their concentration. And chances are the legs are going to rock. I'm, I'm yeah. conscious here, but 
if you get flustered, you're probably yes. going to do this, and that changes the game too. Okay. Now the next thing to remember is I want to get good posture with a with a uh, kibalachi. So I like to grab the gi, or if they don't grab the gi, grab the jacket or the t-shirt or whatever. And then I'm going to come up and lean my head over their head like that. And then I'm in this strong kiba position. Now, I remember my focus is my stability. I never surrender my stability for the sake of the technique. So I don't want to come wailing in like that and lose my posture. Okay, what I'm going to do is keep my posture here, there, do whatever you hand you can. Every time you're just throwing short, sharp punches, bang, back fist there like that, round, yeah, make them think. Good. And then my head comes over their head, and I'm going to stand in a good kiba. Good uh, half kiba, half sunshine. Okay, and now in this position, that's when I'm in a position to, to throw short, sharp punches like that. He blocks, slap it down, boom. and I want to keep clearing his hands and keep throwing those punches. Clear, clear, boom. Throw them, yeah, boom. And this is what the BJJ guy is not used to. Okay? In that position, he can still do things. He'll try and sweep. If my stance, I just remember what's my goal? Stability. If he grabs my leg like that, I need to be conscious of it. But all that also does is if he grabs my leg, I'm going to come down on that leg. Now that hand is stuck. So now, it's a, yeah, what's he going to do? You're going to come across, pin that arm, and then now you're in a position to do more. And the only reason you can do this is because you've obeyed a fundamental rule of BJJ. Keep your posture, keep your stability. There like that. Okay? You don't want to start to try and back out of the guard if you don't know what you're doing. Okay? You're better off getting them losing consciousness with impact blows. Also, you've got punches here and you've got punches in the groin. Sorry. Okay. You've got punches in the groin, elbows in the groin. Don't forget that as I'm here. Remember, pelvic tilt, maintain my posture. From that position, he goes to grab me. I clear it, look, elbow straight in the groin. Elbow straight in the groin. Punch, groin, punch, groin. Elbow in the, in the, with the body. Back fist. Look, he blocks it. Knock that hand down. Back fist there. Boom. In the elbow, in the groin again. And even grab the groin. But I don't want to start to do things with my arms to clear the legs because they're just... BJJ guys are just too good dealing with that. And unless you've got a lot of experience with BJJ, you'll get caught. Okay, you need to be doing things that BJJ guys are not familiar with. And that's short, explosive blows whilst you maintain your posture in the guard. Okay, you're in this position. And I just want to keep things short and explosive. Back fists there, around there, boom, there. Hit the door and bang, boom. You want to keep, but nothing is loading up. Because if I really oh, load up, boom, next thing you know, I'm in trouble. And he's starting to choke me, take my back and all that sort of stuff. And that's where guys, karate guys, wake up five minutes later and go, well, what happened? Okay? So that's a really simple concept, idea of how to deal with a situation that may arise uh, with someone who's experienced at BJJ. I love BJJ, don't get me wrong. Um, I think every karate guy should be doing BJJ because it'll unlock, unravel a lot of things that you may not understand about certain movements in karate, why we do certain things in kata and so on. Because remember that the old masters who created these kata, most of them had a fifth, sixth dan in judo. They understood groundwork. They understood newaza and wrestling and grappling even gyakute, the, the, and, um, the, the term gyakute, which has been translated as handhold reverses, but essentially what it is is just hand grappling and hand fighting, learning how to do that. So it's really important if you want your karate to keep growing within the bounds of what is realistic, well, then you need to address these issues. Get someone who's do who does a bit of BJJ because they need to understand that the striking potential too. BJJ, first and foremost, is a sport with a lot of rules. And any sport where there is no striking means you have to understand the striking. If you look at UFC even, uh, a lot of the BJJ guys and wrestlers are winning fights with striking. 
So they've learned how to deal with the strikes whilst maintaining the danger of their grappling art. Okay, the other thing they'll do is they'll grab your collar in the guard. In that case, that's a perfect time to go crack across the top of their arm. But Eric Paulson, you know, Craig Perry mentions Eric Paulson. Um, I've learned so much from Eric over the years. He was introduced, I was introduced to him through my BJJ coach, John Donoghue, and I uh, spent a lot of time going backwards and forwards training with him. Uh, but anyway, that's just one fundamental idea you might like to play with from a stand-up fighter's perspective. The key is maintain your posture and stability within the guard of a BJJ fighter, and they are experts at breaking your posture. So you have to obey certain rules, and that is maintain your upright posture, keep your arms close, and try to avoid them getting grips. If they get a grip on your collar, on your arm, you're in big, big trouble. There's not a lot you can do. So you have to break those grips off and come back with short, sharp, explosive movements. Any comments, Mitch? Well, it's just something you said then, Shia, is keep your arms short and your elbows in tight because sometimes I'm just imagining there's a tendency, if you're not aware of it, to, to reach out to try and grab them and hold them and punch them. And you obviously said not to do that. But if you do that, you realise you're going to get caught in an armbar or a triangle yeah. or something like you said. It's almost... It's almost natural to want to reach out and hold them down. And the BJJ guy will, if he's a blue belt or above, you can guarantee virtually 100% of the time that he'll break your arm or arm by you. Uh, in, a, in a sporting situation, he'll arm by you. In a world, real world situation, he'll just snap your arm. So you would never want to overreach. A good rule of thumb is you don't want to let your hands go past your knee line. So you don't let them off your elbow. If you need to reach, don't let them go any further than your knees don't reach out here just reach out that far i keep everything back here that's as far as i want to reach if i want to reach to here i pull my elbow back and i keep everything tight because he wants to get under my elbows he's working to get under oh, sorry. he's working to get under my elbows here like this okay i don't want to allow him if he gets that i need to pull that back okay so i'm going to pull that back and shorten my arms again i come in here like this and I work off this position. If he starts to grab my arm once again, that's where I snap down and strike again. Yes. I'm just doing all these constant back fists here. Not nope. trap the arms, back fist there, punch there, even thumbs in the eyes and that sort of thing. Palm heel up the nose is a ripper. Okay, and once you get the opportunity, you're gonna bounce their head on the cement. But if I overreach to do that, then, then now I'm in trouble and they're gonna sweep me and all. So the dangers are plentiful. The opportunities are few. You want to make sure that you obey the rule, keep your uh, posture, look for your correct grips, and uh, go from there. Um, if you look at Chapter 15, Salsa is even doing things like sweeps and kicks and knees in the head and elbows and so on when you get stuck on the ground. So don't abandon your karate in the pursuit of grappling uh, understanding. Try to combine them and keep them together. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Mitch. Of course. Thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed that. Another nice short one. And uh, I think it's really important that uh, we work on extending the range of our skills. Awesome. See you next week. Awesome.